So, um, next week, as of the next week, we'll be doing our third walk. We will be doing our links. And um, so we have some wonderful tracks here. Very, this is about cancer, the entertainment track, depression. Uh, so many persons going through depression now during this time. Um, health in a hurry. And um, change your mindset. You know, we have. Yeah, we have a, a lot of them to be given out. We, um, if you want some to give out to some of your, uh, some persons on your map, you can speak with us and we can give you them. Uh, but this one here, that class I just promoted, uh, what God, you see, when God said go, he, he didn't say to go and um, convert anyone. <laughs> Who does the conversion? Christ. God does the conversion. So when he invites us to go, he just wants us to present. This is how we are going to do the Bible study. We are just going to invite them. Invite them to do the Bible study. When whoever wants or is ready to do the Bible study, as far as I said, we are going to um, direct them to the lessons. And then the Lord will take it from there. So if anyone needs some of this this week to give to the um, today, to, to give to give to anyone, you can speak with Pastor. But next week, during our prayer walk, we will be distributing some of these to the Lord. Okay. I encourage us to serve God. How do we serve God? By doing what? Going. And when we go, God says, presence will be with us. May the Lord bless us as we go. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I have a few questions of Pastor and Mark. I just, I just want to welcome you and uh, to say that it's good to be here uh, in the house of the Lord. You know, I love the part that uh, the psalmist of David says here in, Mark, in, Mark, in Psalm uh, 27, at verse, uh, verse 4, it says, One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I, I seek. But I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I want to welcome all of you, my sister and my brother over there. I think we met when we were being organized and then uh, we are happy to have you. And now I don't call you visitors, you know. Amen. We love you so much and it's nice to see you. I don't know, they sing so well, they play the piano. We thank God for all of you. You don't know how we love you guys, uh, you know. And we have just, you know, we have so grown closer now. And, uh, you know, you know, end of working with the Lord until they say, let's go. And they say, no more. Now you're working with us and say, no more, going back anywhere. <laughs> just be with us. Let's be with God. Brother, thank you so much for coming. We really, we love you so much. You know, when I saw it, the school tell me, go and say, thank you, welcome them. And my brother, they asked me, hey, what is this? Where you What is this? I said, the church. Okay. And they said, where? Maybe if it was other meeting, you could have not come here. But when you heard about the name of the Lord, he said, I will go in. Amen. So we thank God. Amen. And our members, we welcome you. May God bless you. This is a church where we empower others to serve. We are, we are not dominating as leaders of the church. We want everybody to be empowered. So when you join us, you are a disciple. We don't call church members. We call us disciples. Disciple makers. We want to where we are to make disciples. And even your school, you can make disciples. No one is young, nobody's old. We can all do God's work. May God bless you. I just love, I want to express my love to you. I love you. And pray for me as I always pray for you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Amen. 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 Come down south of every blessing and stand, please.
is either written out from the book of John, that's it, that's what it says. been sustaining life in our bodies. You are God, Father, we recognize that this morning we credit you, Lord, as God. We acknowledge you as God, completely in control, completely in charge. Lord, uh, we praise you and we thank you for all that you are to us, all that you do for us, your sacrifice, Lord, angels, holy angels that you assign to us, to our family members, to our parents, to our neighborhoods, Lord, to protect us. All the things that you can do to take, to care for us, to provide for us, we thank you for. Lord, we thank you for God, Holy Spirit, 
who was for us, who loved us, who was with us and working with us to bring us closer and closer to you with our faith in you and to walk side by side with you all the time and never give up, no matter what. And not to throw in the towel, not to give up, um, not to let go, but to continue to have trust in you because you are faithful. That um, you will not go back on your word, Lord. You are for us, and nothing can separate us, can separate you from us, except for us ourselves. Uh, if we choose not to believe in you, if we choose not to keep on having faith in you, in your goodness, in your compassion, in your faithfulness. Father, we thank you so much. That when we betrayed you, when our first parents betrayed you in the Garden of Eden, you chose to uh, not take offense and uh, give up on us. But you decided, Lord, that you will stand with us no matter what it costs you. Oh, Lord, what matter of love is this that a man should give, who should lay his life for his friends? Indeed, we are more than friends to you. We are your flesh and blood. We are your offspring, your children, Lord. Your whole humanity, your whole race. It doesn't matter regardless of what color of our, the pigment of our skin, where we come from. No matter what the uh, demographic is, no matter what um, the social status is, no matter what, how, how much money we have, our social economic status, whatever work of, work of life, will come from, Lord. You're saying that we're all in this together. We're all in this together. COVID, Lord, war, diseases, betrayal, everything, hardship at work, everything. You said we are all the whole human race, regardless of where they come from. We are all in this together against one enemy, Satan. And not only that, Father, you said you are with the human race. Lord, we magnify your name for your grace. We magnify your name for your compassion. We magnify your name, Lord, for saying that you are with us. Even though when we misunderstand you, when we don't have the faith that we should have in you, when we don't trust your heart the way we should, you said, Lord, nothing, nothing will separate me from you. And you prove it by sending your own son, you coming in the flesh through the son, Jesus Christ, and shedding your precious, infinite blood on Calvary for us to prove to us that we are friends. We are we we are worth your blood, Lord. Father, what an example of solidarity. What is what an example of being together, Lord. And this morning, as we approach the table of communion, celebrating your shed blood, Lord, until you come. This is what we're celebrating. We're celebrating a God who is not too holy, who is not too high to condense himself and say, I am in this with you. I am in, the, in this with you together. We are in this together. We are one. And Christ prayed, as recorded in the book of John, chapter 17, Father, I pray that, that your people, your children, be one, just like you and I are one. <coughs> Lord, we pray for unity of the churches. We pray for the unity of all Christians, regardless of whether they're Baptists, Adventists. We pray, Father, that we all come together as children of God and love each other, Lord, and obey your commandments. Father, thank you for each one of us here. Thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives. Thank you for everybody, the young one, little Daniel, uh, uh, Skylar, the, all the young men, Trevon, all the... the all of us here that are here, Father, we thank you for keeping us alive today, to allow us to see today. We thank you for being with us no matter what we're going through, depression, headaches, uh, anything that we're going through, uh, discouragement, Father, you're there with us. You are closer to us when we're suffering than when we're not. Father, we thank you so much for being with everybody. In anything that we're doing, you're leading us, you're ordering our steps, be it we're going to school, being it we're raising a family, we are, we, we are working at the company, whatever we are, whatever we're doing, whatever we're going through, wherever we are, as young, as old as, as we are, you are with us and you are for us all. 
and thank you and we magnify your name for this holy heritage, for being in this together with us. We praise you, Father. We thank you for forgiving, of, uh, forgiving us of our sins. We thank you, Father, for calling us to go and share your good news. Father, I pray for Pastor Joseph as he comes to share uh, your word with us. Be with him, empower him, be with his family, be with good news, be with all the churches that are worshiping across the world today. And may your name be glorified in our lives and the worship that we offer to you today. And may you pour a blessing, your grace to us. Father, all of us who are different here, we have different problems. We pray, Father, that you will grace us, you will impart your grace to us this morning. Whatever it is we need, if it's peace, Father, we receive peace. If it's sleep at night, we cannot sleep. We receive uh, a sleep that now we If it's stress, Father, we, we receive calm and peace. Anything that any of your children right here kneeling down, anybody, I raise my hand, Father. Anything that we're going through, if it, is it a job that we need, Father? We receive, we trust you that you will provide that job in due time. Anything that we're going through, Father, anything, our lives may be threatened. Anything that we're going through, Lord, we may be going through, whatever it is, we pray in the name of Jesus, each one of us will receive the grace that we come to expect today. We come to you, Father, knowing that we'll be revived as we sing in the song. Anything we need, Father, to do well in school, to, to achieve in, in, um, in, at the job, to do well, Father, to have yes, grace, to have favor of people uh, at the job, in the neighborhood, favor, Father, we pray for favor on our lives. Yes, we pray, Father, that you will give you our mind and we'll have good thoughts. That we'll have good thoughts, Father. That we'll rebuke the enemy when he comes to discourage and tell us we're not good enough. We rebuke the spirit behind people who tell us that we will never amount to anything. Father, we thank you, Father, that you said that you are so worthy. That you gave your life, you shed your blood in Calvary for us. And we are celebrating that today. You shed blood that is powerful. That speaks louder than our mistakes. The blood, the blood that was shed on Calvary, Father, is stronger than our mistakes. It's stronger than any addition that we have. It's stronger than anything that we're going through, Father. The blood of Christ, the blood of Christ, Father, is stronger than the darkness in our lives. That we, Father, we receive the cleansing of your blood today. As we take the partake of the Holy Communion, we pray that that, uh, that, that juice that we're going to drink symbolizing your blood will cleanse us, cleanse our conscience, heal our bodies of sickness and diseases, we believe in that, Father, and we receive it. We expect it and we receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 This week's story is the dog that laughed all the way home. You heard this before? All right. Well, we'll get started. So, as Wayne parked his pickup truck beside his house one day after work, he heard the neighbor lady calling for him to come over to her house as fast as he could. When Wayne got there, he saw that his little beaker, be his little beagle dog, lying on the ground, flopping around like a fish out of water. The dog was foaming at the mouth and acting crazy. He had a weird look in his eyes. Wayne carefully picked up his dog and brought him home. He was worried that his little dog had the terrible raging disease. To keep the little beagle from escaping while he called the veterinarian, Wayne put him in a horse trailer with high side rails that he had in the yard. 
Then he ran into the house and called the vet. Hurriedly, he explained all about the strange way his dog was acting. Sadly, he found out from the vet that the only way to tell for sure if his dog had rabies was to test some of his brain cells. Now, of course, there'd be no way to do this while his dog was still alive. So Wayne hung up the phone after making an appointment for the vet to see his dog. It looked very bad for the little thing. After making up his mind about what he had to do, he went inside to get the dog out of the trailer. As he walked up, the little beagle got so excited that he jumped clear over the top of the trailer side and landed on Wayne. As the dog struggled to keep from falling, he scratched, he scratched Wayne's face. Some of the foam from his mouth fell into Wayne's bleeding scratches. Now Wayne was really worried because a human can catch this terrible disease from the saliva of an animal who has rabies. Wayne tied a rope around the dog's neck and lowered him into the front seat of his truck. All the way to the vet's office, the dog kept acting crazy. He bit the seat, attacked the gear shift, and kept foaming at the mouth. When he reached the animal hospital, the veterinarian was waiting for him, and Wayne pulled the dog from the truck. He seemed more like a wild dog now than at a pet. The wise and experienced vet took a look at this little animal and said, oh, he's got a bone stuck in his throat, right from inside. Wayne was astonished. He had been afraid that his dog would have to die. Instead, the veterinarian took, simply took his fingers out and forced the dog's mouth open. Then he reached out his throat and popped out a bone. And just and then just a little bone about two inches long, about as big, about as loud as a pencil. So Wayne said later that if a dog had signed a with a leak, his bleeding would surely be dead. Immediately the dog calmed down and stopped foaming at the mouth. Wayne thought he even began to smile, almost like a human. On the way home, his dog sat up on the seat beside Wayne, just like a little kitty, enjoying the scenery as he passed by, as they passed by him. So thanks to his training, the veterinarian just knew what to do. He saved the dog's life. He studied and learned all he could about animals, and God had given him the ability and the talent to become a good animal doctor. So isn't that wonderful? And we have special people to whom we can turn to when we have special needs. I'm sure Wayne was thankful that he had a good animal doctor to treat his little beagle friend. I know Wayne was glad that he was not alone. When the beagle was so sick, Wayne was very scared. He didn't know what to do. Can you think of especially trained people who help you sometimes? And you cannot do for yourself? Can you think of a specially trained person that helps you? God? Okay, well, yeah, that's always, that's the correct answer. Like, what else here on earth? What's an example? Like, who's a trained professional that, that can help you while you're here? Can't think of one. What about Zachary? Can you think of a trained professional that can help you when you're in need? Okay, I, I, I'll give you another example. Let's say you have, uh, something's wrong with uh, the pipes in your home. Who would you call? A plumber, right? Something was wrong with uh, the electricity or the power went out. Who would you call? Yeah, electrical people, electrician, power company, that's good. When you're sick, who would you call? A doctor? When your cat is stuck in a tree or there's a fire, who would you call? Fire department? That's right. So, yeah, anyway, so um, I'm sure your moms and dads can name a lot of special people. They have turned to when they had special needs. But just remember, God loves us, and he hears our prayers, uh, and he's always there for us when we have a need. And he provides us with special people as we make this journey through life, that when we have trouble, we can reach out to them. So be thankful and be glad that we can call on them. All right? So who would like to pray? so much.
it's time to worship God uh, in the evening. I see, uh, look at the, um, the church. I see that some people are already ready with their money in their hands to give. Uh, glory to God. Amen. 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 Um, this morning we're going to have our faithfulness uh, in the Sabbath school lesson. We had a wonderful discussion. We will drive with. <laughs> we'll drive with. Uh, I want to read something to you and make a quick comment and then we'll pray. Um, so you, uh, go to YZ. You can um, start going around and come. You can do that. You can start going around. Uh, I want to read something quickly out of uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verses uh, 9 and 10, and I'll make a quick comment. Um, while Brother Wise is passing out the basket, um, we can see on the screen the different ways that uh, we can give through Tango on the screen. Here, I don't know if the camera can catch that, but uh, these are the, uh, the different ways that we, uh, we can give. And out of Proverbs chapter 3, uh, verses 9 and 10, we read those words. It says, Honor the Lord God with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. Why? God is worthy, right? God is worthy, right? That we honor him to begin with. But then, you know, that's okay. Uh, that goes without saying, right? But then uh, in verse 10, it gives us the reason. Right? So that your bronze, how many people have bronze in here? <laughs> that means we don't have bronze, but we have wallets, right? <laughs> and we have big accounts. So your bronze will be filled, right, yeah. with plenty, and your vats will do what? Will actually not just be filled, will overflow with new wine, right? With new wine. I guess it's not just wine, but everything good. All right? So, I'm going to pull it down. Let it hold on. Hold it with your hands. Right. So, uh, this is a wonderful passage that tells us to prioritize our giving, to prioritize God. Amen? Amen. To prioritize God. Uh, I think, I remember when, when God showed me uh, a few years ago, Sister Nadine, a few years ago, that budgeting doesn't mean, my brother, to, to follow every penny, every dollar, you know? Every, every sense. But budgeting, the best of budgeting is to prioritize. Prioritize. You know, my wife and I, I remember when that when God spoke to me and, and told me, make sure that your tithes go directly uh, from your bank account into the church account. Right? I don't even see it. It hits my, it hits my bank account and it goes to the church. I don't even see it. Sister Anna, I don't see it. And before I, I get paid, God gets paid first. Amen. God first gets paid first. And we never, never, never had any problem returning a faithful tithe ever since. Ever since. So, as um, you think about your finances, as we think about our, our finances, Sister Kobe, think as we spoke this morning, when it came, we said that we belong to God. We should give ourselves to God first as a sacrifice. And it shouldn't be a problem to give the 10%. If we put ourselves in the basket, then the 10% is also in the basket. Yeah. <laughs> As a sacrifice. Amen? Yeah. Let, us, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for giving your all to us on the, on the cross of Calvary, shedding your blood for us through your son Jesus Christ. Uh, and Lord, because you have been so faithful, because you have shown us solidarity, we thank you for giving us the faith that we should prioritize you, that we should not have any God above you, uh, that we should give and return to you cheerfully uh, a faithful uh, tithe and offering. We pray for everyone here that um, they may uh, have increase in their job, that they will find favor, that will find uh, promotion, and that um, they will be faithful to you, to your church, whichever church they go to. We thank you and ask those things in your wonderful name. Of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Can we turn to the Savior is worthy to acknowledge? That 
you say? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think uh, I want to thank God that we have come together once again to worship God. Don't overthink, you know, as I'm going to give a message, don't overthink. Now relax your mind, eh? Because when you overthink, then you, it will lead to sadness. If you overthink, you become th sad, you know. So I always avoid thinking too much. I always uh, take things easy, you know. I know we have been seated here for long, but uh, we are not going. I don't preach long sermons. Mm -hmm. Very quick, I'm done, you know. <laughs> so, so long, so that means you have to keep with me so quick. When you think I'm going to continue, I will stop. <laughs> so that, uh, but I want to thank Daniel. It's good to see you again, eh? Good man, yeah, yeah good guy. And you, you very sharp mind, eh? Like a sharp pencil is also there, suck, you know, suck. And also there is a reason, very, very, we have very, very powerful children here. And uh, my brother, sure, you, you make sure you bring your daughter there, you know, at the time. Are you, do you live around here? No, Where do you live? Uh, about an hour away. Ah, an hour away, man. Wow, so welcome to the area, man. <laughs> Maybe you are spying the area so that you can see whether it's viable. There is always honey and, and, uh, and uh, you know, milk around this area. So we want to thank God, and we are missing some of our members here, like uh, Brother Tim and uh, Ruth, they are not here. You know, it's good to monitor and check, and you can go do visit and see how they are doing. Uh, when I was here, they were not here, but I, I think they went to Florida, but by now I think they are back here. Eh? Mm -hmm. It's good to check each other. And Brother Marik, thank you for what you do back there. You know, we want to, what do you say to Brother Marik? Amen. Uh, you know, uh, he told me that he has already donated. We thank God for you, brother. He has donated uh, a computer for, for the church and uh, that equipment, the, the, the phone. So what do you say? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You know, as we keep on growing, people will be investing in the church. You know, that's very, very important. And when you do so, God always will bless you. It's very, very important that way. 
Uh, today, as you have heard, we have whole communion. Uh, by the way, you know, normally my wife give, gives me greetings and, and then I forget. You know, when I come to the pulpit, I come in the business. Then I always forget to bring greetings for my wife. She told me, when you go say hi to the, to the church. Do you accept the greetings from my wife? Amen. Yes, yes. You know, uh, we are worshiping on another church. We are online. And uh, sometimes my children control. And uh, they are about to go to school. When they go out of them to school, you will see me seeing my wife like a bug working together all the time. But for now, uh, she's also online there. They are children, it's children's Sabbath. And the children were participating also. We have not gotten a place. Please pray for us. We are looking for a place for, to, so that we can also come out of, the, out of Zoom. We are always on Zoom. We want to thank God for those who are on Zoom. If they are, we will thank God for you. And as I've said, we are going to have the whole communion today. And today I have decided to speak on the foot washing. Uh, many, many churches, they don't participate in foot washing, of course. Maybe you are going to touch the dirt. Some of us, we walked on the, I, you know. You know, when I grew up, I didn't, uh, I didn't wear shoes, you know. And nowadays, I wear very nice shoes, you know. This is very nice shoes, yeah? This is they are very nice. But when I grew up, I never wore shoes. It was so, so bad. You know, I can go to school barefooted, and I walk like this. That's my time. I don't look like, but uh, it is true, you know, what I'm telling you. And then I, wear, I, 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 I used to wear a, a, a shirt, and one, I keep on changing it. You know, I go, I wash it and deliver. I put it in iron. I put it there. It dries up, and then I can put on when I take a shower. You can imagine. And then you know, when I talk like this, you can't really think whether it's true, the way I'm shining, isn't it? Eh? Uh, so, so that's how it was. So, I, I, man, we have come from far. You know, but God is great. When you trust in God, God will wash you. He will bring you from the streets and wash you and make you what He wants you to be. And so long as you keep on depending on Him. Eh? I said, you know, I don't want this poverty. We were very poor. But now we are rich because I'm here now. You know? I don't really worry about anything. I eat so well. I sleep well. And you know, when I go to bed, I just sleep like a baby. You know, what am I worrying for? People worry so much. They think about so many things. I want to have good thoughts in my mind. As I always say, your thoughts can influence, it can influence the way you relate to yourself and to relate to other people. So I want to have good thoughts when I go to bed. I sleep so well like a baby. Let me tell you. But when I go to the bathroom, when I come again, I come again and I sleep immediately. Some people, when they go to the bathroom, when they come again, they start wandering around. <laughs> wandering, their mind is wandering around. You know, you don't sleep well. Anytime I go, if I sit down, I go to sleep. Why? Because when I think, you know, when I'm in school, I, my, my, my daughter, when I'm in school, I think of school. When I'm doing, if I'm studying my Bible, I think I'm studying my Bible. Some people tell me, Pastor, don't go and tell people what I've said. I say, that I don't really. You know, when I see you, that's when I remember, I, I know what is there. When I'm praying, that's when I'm praying for you. Why am I thinking when you tell me that's me and you? I'm not going, Sister Camera. I'm not going to tell people about your business all over. No, 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 no. When I see you, I remember. That's the time. When I go, I am with you. That's it. Unless we have, you know, if we have this. It's very important, children of God, to focus on Jesus Christ. And the one who died for us. Jesus died for us. And that's why we are here today celebrating this. No, when I remember what Jesus has done in my life, I can't forget it. So I was talking about the foot washing, the importance of foot washing. And that's why some guy like Peter in the Bible couldn't understand what Jesus was doing. You know, I want to let you know it is in preparation for the Lord's Supper. Most of us Advent Christians take, the, take part on ordinance of foot washing. But a, a, a practice unique to the seven-day Advent church and normally referred to as what? Ordinance of what? Ordinance of humility. You humble yourself, washing my feet. I look at the, some people now when we say foot washing, they start looking like this. Oh, am I going to wash? A very selective room am I going to wash? If you encounter with my feet, it's so rough, man. If you are going to wash me, brother, well, it's so rough. Some people, they have smooth feet, you know, so, because they are good. Mine has run. I used to run marathon barefooted, you know, I run. 
So it is, you know, I, yeah, I'm telling you the truth. I'm not faking here, nothing here. I'm saying the truth. So when you touch my feet, it's a little bit rough. And then my children ask me, what about these dots? But it's smooth now because I wear shoes. I shower nicely. Yeah, they ask me, what about these dots on your feet? I tell them down here, and my, you know, they, I tell them, this is how they struggle. Thank God that you are here. Eh? You know, <laughs> we used to tell, you know, nowadays, anything your children ask, you give them. At that time, no, but even you don't ask anything. I remember one time I became number one in class. And when I became number one in class, and I took, it was 150, I become one out of 150. When I took my father, I never went to school. So when I took the report card to my dad, and they said, you got number one out of 150, so I could have number one 50 out of 50, so that that's the highest, you know. Do you get what I'm saying, really? So number one, that's very low to my dad, because he never went to school. So if I got 150 out of 150, I say, hallelujah, because you, need, you got the highest. Can you imagine? Thank God for your dad. Thank God for you. That's why sometimes I'm hard to my children. When they tell me they are trying, I tell them, don't try. Do your best. Make it, I make sure that, they, you know, when you fail, uh, Lero, when you, my children, when they fail, you know me, I, I don't bother, and I'm saying here, you just understand me. I don't bother with my children. But the moment I see a V, a v in their podcast, that's when they start explaining me. Because I would go to school and know the teachers talk with the teachers. Why? Because I want to know why they're getting that. What are you lacking? Because food you eat. You know, you sleep well. Everything is there. So tell me what you are lacking. You are bringing a V. <laughs> that was, my stomach started hacking, you know. My stomach will hack. And they know that. I never bother. I never ask them. I never go there. When they bring a burger, all straight A's, and then I say hallelujah. Because that's good. Now, why? I don't. But if they don't get, I bother. And they don't want me to bother their school. I have to go to school, ask to school. I have to talk with the teachers. I have to talk. I need to know what we can do so that they tell me they are trying. I said, teacher, don't tell my children they are trying. I want them to do their best. They, are, they get this because they are trying. But if they do, they work, they, they do their best, then they, they will not be here. So the teacher will say, oh, you know, you know, let me tell you, sir, your children are really trying. I, I don't want to hear the word try. Why? No, I don't want. So what I'm saying here, humility. I'm talking about humility. The Bible says, you know, when you read down, it says, no, but besides humility, foot washing also symbolizes the wordings of what? Of a, a fundamental belief, renewing, renewing, cleansing. Renewing what? Cleansing. Very important because we renew ourselves. The same way you get dirt to your feet, every now and then we encounter with the people and we get, sometimes we don't agree, sometimes there's problems. And then you, you, you know, you, you do something that you never expected. And that's why we do this ordinance. So that, you know, your body is washed, you are clean, you have accepted Jesus Christ. But because we live in the world of sin, sometimes we encounter with you, we differ with you. I need to be washed. So periodically, every quarter we do this to remember what Jesus did. So we are renewing ourselves, cleansing ourselves. It is symbolizing that now we are being washed, our sins are washed. Not every now and then I will take you to baptize you because you have sinned. But when we do this, this is a, it symbolizes now we are being renewed again and being re-energized. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Now, Lord, as we dive into the word, Father, I pray that you empower me. Father, I pray, nail me behind the cross so that you can be heard. For we pray in Jesus' name. Now, as we go to the, the Bible, I told you I'm about to finish. As we go to the Bible... John chapter 13, and you read from chapter 1, you see Jesus washes his disciples' feet. Jesus is washing his disciples' feet. And I've entitled my sermon, unless I wash you, you have no part in, uh, uh, in me. This is Peter, when Peter encountered with Jesus Christ, Jesus was washing his disciples, and as he was going around, and they reached at Peter, you know Peter was a very talkative guy. And the Peter knew everything. And they wanted to please Jesus at all times. And they would say, you know, Master, you can't wash my feet. You know, you are higher than me. But Jesus was 
looking, was symbolizing, was doing something, demonstrating something which was very significant. The Bible says here, it was before the Passover, uh, this, Jesus knew, I'm reading from verse 1, it was, uh, uh, it was just before the Passover, feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to do what? To leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own, having loved his own, the time has come. Now I must live to go to my Father. You know, Jesus came and they died on the cross of Calvary. You know, some people think that Jesus died for them. Je we died in Jesus Christ. All of us died in Jesus Christ. When Jesus is dying on the cross of Calvary, it is you and I who is doing what? Who died there. And then, then our names were written in the book of life. So today, when you do something, you know, let me tell you, that's what we call justification. Justification. That our names were written in the book of life. All of us when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. So it is not Jesus who died for us, but we died in Jesus Christ as we died because Jesus never sinned. All of us, we died in one man who is that Jesus Christ. Now we are being set free. We are being delivered from where? From everything. And let me tell you, children of God, when Jesus died, he died for our sins and he died for our sicknesses. So we should not be sick, by the way. Hallelujah. Amen. When we get sick, it's a problem. Because you are not going to encounter, you know, some people say, it's God's will that I'm sick. You go to the hospital, you say, sister, sister, you could get well. But you know, it's God's will. We never know. It is not God's will for us to be sick. Never. Never. When you suffer afflictions, trouble, suffering of such a kind, persecuted, and that's when we say what? It, God can allow. You know, people say, even, even Paul is another story. Even Paul, there was something on his, you know, there was a thorn in his, on his flesh. And they think that Paul was sick. He was not sick. How can a messenger, the Bible says a messenger of the devil. Can sickness be a messenger of the devil? It's a messenger of the devil. Because those were persecutions. He suffered persecution. Because when Peter... Look, when Peter was, when Joel, Paul was sick, do you know what they did? He was blind. What, did he go and they, they prayed for him and they recovered? Yes. Do you know that Paul one time and, uh, you know, that's, I will be preaching that sermon. Watch out, watch out, watch out that time. I don't want to go there. Now, what I'm saying, because I said I will finish first. Let, let's, let's, let's dissect this. I'm saying that the Bible tells us here, Jesus was about to go to his father, the one who sent him. And the Bible says, having loved his own who were in this world, Jesus loved his disciples and the people. That's why he came. You know, when I do something wrong along by Jesus, I feel so sad. Not because of anything. I don't want to wrong my Jesus. I don't want to wrong the one who died that allowed my, myself to be in him. He seen nothing. He did nothing. But he persevered all those persecutions. All oh, those because of me. And again, I pain my Jesus. How can I make my Jesus so sad? How can I take my Jesus? You know, every time you sin, you take Jesus on the cross again. And again and again. Oh, Lord, forgive me. You know, when I do something wrong, I always cry. I tell Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me to pain you so much. I don't want to wound you at all times. You know, when we do something wrong, we wound Jesus. But Jesus is so loving. He said, having loved my own. The Bible says, having loved my own. They say, the Bible, loving my own. Who are in the world, Jesus loves us so much even when we are in the world. Regardless of what's going on in the world now, even what's going on in Ukraine, Jesus still loves his children. And you don't know what's coming on. I want to let you know, even right now, what's going on. I had the one commentator, you know me, I listen very carefully. Because whatever I listen, I try to give the ears of spiritual ears, spiritual eyes. When I see everybody, I see everybody as a candidate for the kingdom of God. I never condemn anybody. Now, I, I hear a commentator saying, it is this, what is happening now, Russia and Ukraine, is igniting a, a new world order. The new world order, they're going to be together. 
and pass a new world order. Every nation is going to join NATO so that they can protect themselves. And they are going to make rules which are going even to regulate how we worship and how we do things. Time is nearing, children of God. We are just very close to close over. And as we near the closing over, we are about to close the river Jordan and sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. I want to be among the number, those who are going to sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. And I want to bend of fellowship to be among the number. So when I look around, I see my brother King. I say, wonderful, man, we have made it so far. Hallelujah, it was not so easy, but eventually we have made. And I will be seeing you singing so nice. Nicely singing, and I will say hallelujah. Or, uh, Lero, I will see you blank. I don't know whether pianos are going to be there. I don't know, but we hope it's going to be there because we'll be singing and singing and singing hallelujah because we have overcome. But we must practice humility from now because if there's no humility, you can't really do what you can't even accept Jesus Christ fully in your heart. So, Jesus loved us. Even though in this, we are in this world. He now, he said he showed them the full, full extent of his love. He showed, you know, people say I love you through the, you know, you can say I love you. Jesus demonstrated his love by dying for his friend. You know, people can say, Let, I don't, you know, I don't care what people tell me through their mouth. I want to see action. I want to see what's happening. When you say, I love you, I love you, you can just say, you know, you know, you can say even, I love Jesus. But really, do you love Jesus? You know, you love Jesus? When I, you just say that, but Jesus loved us. So the Bible says in verse 2, the evening meal was being served, and the devil, the devil, the Bible says, the devil had what? The devil, the devil, the devil. <laughs> Excuse me. The devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. You know, Simon, you know this, this man called uh, who? Judas was among there. And that's why if you watch out, Jesus said, yes, be, Peter, you are clean. But there's some, someone who's here who's not clean. Clean, he was there. Jesus could have fulfilled, you know, the, the, you know, it could have happened the way it could have happened. Jesus could have died, brother, on the cross of Calvary. Before even, even if Judas could have not betrayed him. He could have died in another way. But he came even so that Judas also can what? Get the eternal life. What God, has, you know, I don't want to profit the prophecy. I don't want to profit prophecy. But I want things when the prophecy is being profiled. Not that I am going to do what? Do something which is wrong. For my Lord Jesus Christ. And then it's revealed in my own house. No. The thing is, Judas, the Bible says Judas is called son of Simon to betray Jesus. He was also there. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power. And that he had come from God. Jesus. Everything was put in God's, uh, under his what? Under his power. You know, Jesus, even Jesus, when Jesus being tempted and he was taken to the wilderness to be tempted, you know, Jesus could have done. You know, the devil is tempting Jesus. You go do, make this to be stone, make stone to be bread, you know. Jesus could have made them. But the devil was tri tricking Jesus. If Jesus could have made the bread, to, stone to be bread, you know what he would be saying? Oh, now he's exercising his goldenness. You know, you are not, you know. He is using this. He wanted to accuse Jesus. But Jesus had all the power. God has put all the power under his, you know, he has put all things under his power. And that he had come from God. Jesus had come from God and was returning to God. So he was going. Has already finished what he, he was doing here. And now in preparation for his going, in preparation for his going, listen to what he does. Verse 4. So powerful, says here. So he got up from the meal, took off his what? His outer clothing, and rubbed the towel around his, his waist. After that, he poured water into the basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with what? With a towel that rubbed around, his, around him. Let me tell you, children of God, this is so powerful when I read this. What Jesus did. 
You know, I've well, I, I, I don't discriminate. I go to churches. I've preached even Sunday churches. When I go there, they invite me to speak. I speak. I also participate in their old communion, you know, carefully. You know, when I do that, I watch what they do. I've never seen them washing their feet. And I'm saying here on my camera, maybe there are some, but I've not seen. In right here, I go, even white churches. I've, I've preached all over around here. And I see, you know, they give you there. You, you, at the door, you are given. Then you go there, so the pastor says something, and then you do what? You partake, you know. That's it. But we are practicing what Jesus said. And that's why it is very, very important. In the days, I want you to know that in the days of Christ, the people wore sandals over their, their, foot, their feet on the dust roads. Their feet were the first part of the body to become soiled. Sometimes, even uh, sunburn. You can see what I was talking about. You know, you are wearing sandals. And as you walk around, sometimes, let me tell you, you don't know even jiggers. You know jiggers? Something that bites you, some insects, they bite you, and you get in, then you remove it, and then the whole man is there. I don't want you to know that. You know, it's very difficult. So you walk around like this. You walk around. Some people, their feet even change like this. So that time of Jesus Christ, historically, people were walking barefooted, or they were wearing sandals, and as sandals, and as they walk there, they say, their feet get dirty. That's why when you come into the house, now the tradition was, then somebody has to wash your feet so that you can relax. You walk a long distance. No cars. Some places, my, my daughters, there was no car. You just walk a very long distance. I used to really walk even to school almost like, uh, like 10 miles away. So I have to wake up very early in the morning and walk 10 miles away from where the school was. And you just walk. And I'm not lying. Why do I lie in the camera? So why? People, I, I don't lie. I say, and then you walk, and when you reach there in the school, and then you sit down. No wonder that we are not performing so well. Because you, know, you are so tired, you feel like sleeping. Hmm? But still, because you want to read something, you want to be somewhere. I always tell my children, here you have all, all the opportunities. We didn't have this opportunity anywhere. What do we have here? You can go to school and study, get the loan. I want to get it and become a big man, you know, a big lady, you know. What for? So, so the, that time, as I'm saying here, uh, as I'm saying here, they, 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 they become soiled and even sunburn. So it was customary, those who were what? It was customary, uh, uh, it was customary to those days to order a servant or a junior member of the family to wash a visitor's feet. So if you, are, if you are the youngest, Daniel, they will order you to wash my feet when I come to your house. So or some, if you don't have servants, people are working for you. So when I come to your house, I will come to your house, and then, then you know, I sit down, your dad already arranged, because you are the youngest, your daughter, your sisters cannot do that. And then I sit, I remove, and I'm not going to remove my feet. My, my feet is so dirty, and you put there, and you wash me with cold water so that I can relax my feet. Then I feel good before you give me anything to eat. That's, that's the tradition. And you have to do it. So if you are the youngest, luck, bad luck for you. You are not blessed. You know, you have to do it. You know, you have to do it. That's, that, that's how it was. And it was really. And they will do it honorably. It, it made the visitor feel refreshed and was used as a sign of welcome. So if you don't wash my feet, so I'm not welcome in that house. If you ignore me, so the sign of welcome, it is when Daniel sees me, and he says, Daddy, the visitor is here. And Daniel knows it immediately, and he goes, he rushes, and brings the basin, and brings some water, and they start doing what? The visitor sits where, and you start washing me. And they said, a towel, they didn't have much. And you sit down, and they look at cloth, a piece of cloth, and they wipe you, because they didn't have, they wipe you around, and they try you. Nowadays, when people wash their feet, then they... They dry you so well, and even they massage you a little bit, you feel so good, your feet, and then you relax. That They said it was refreshing. It was so nice. That's a sign of welcome. Yet, uh, yet you know, you know one thing here, yet when Simon, the, the Pharisee, invited Christ to, the, to his house, he did not extend this courtesy. This Pharisee, who Simon, when he invited Jesus to his house, he never extended. Do you want to read the verse? It is in Luke chapter 7. And verse 44, I want to read, uh, yeah, Luke chapter what? I said, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, verse 44. 
The Bible says he turned, to, he, turned, he, he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she went, she, she, she wet my feet with what? With her tears and wiped them with, with her hair, you know? Yeah, because they were condemning this lady. Because what this, what this lady was doing for Jesus, and Simon was there criticizing, why is he doing like this? But he says, you, I came to your house, even you didn't show any courtesy, no courtesy at all. You didn't do anything for me. And you are condemning this woman who's doing all these things. The woman was kind. She didn't, even, she didn't have even a person. She didn't have even a war. But with tears of sorrow, because Jesus has forgiven her. Jesus has done all things. She even, she, 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 she cried. And the tears were going to Jesus' feet. And the lady was wiping the feet of Jesus with the, with the hair, long hair. You can imagine. But Peter did not do that. But now Jesus takes his, this common practice of washing against his feet and he gives it what? He gives it a spiritual word, a spiritual meaning, highly, highly linked to the saving grace of the gospel. Hallelujah. It is linking to the, to the, to the saving grace of the gospel. When the, people, when the people first accept Christ as their savior, and are baptized into him, his blood cleanses the believer from all sin. Hallelujah. His blood cleanses all the believer from all, from all his sin. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. We were talking about Rehab in the Bible here. We were discussing. You know, number one, what did Rehab do? He heard about Jesus. He heard of him. And he believed, she, oh, she, be, she heard. And then she did what? She believed. Then she did what? Obeyed with no hesitation. She accepted Jesus. And now she's counted among the people of faith. Hallelujah. Number one, it doesn't matter, brother and sister, what is, where you had been or who are you. But when you have heard about the gospel of Jesus Christ, you do what? You hear. And then, then you believe. And then, then you obey. After that, you are being cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. It's very important, friends. That's why Jesus has to give this, this foot washing. He, he used it to, to, what, to what? To signify the spiritual teachings here. Very, very important. So that's what I'm saying here. So, uh, so, so yeah, when you are baptized, 1 John, and you can read that from 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the what? In the light, as he is, as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from what? From all our sins. The blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood. There's always power in the blood of Jesus. That the power of Jesus that cleanses all our sins. It causes away our sins when we accept him. Hallelujah. I feel good for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. So therefore, when I look at the blood of Jesus, I remember when Jesus shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. I see my sins being washed away. Friends, it's very, yeah, you know, I don't know what you think of Jesus when you are on your own. I don't know what you think of Jesus. Friends, when people, I hear people saying there's no Jesus, I wonder what they're talking about. <laughs> the, 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 the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, purifies us from all our sins. But these believers are still living where? When you are being purified by the blood of Jesus and your sins are forgiven. But you are still living where? You are still living in the world. With the world which is being contaminated by sin and all these dirty things. That's what I'm saying here. I say, but this believer who has already been washed are still living in the sinful world. And are, sin and are sinful by nature. You know you are sinful by nature? Yes, without Jesus, you are filled with love. You know, that's why I tell people, don't call yourself, I'm a sinner. Ah, you know, when you are talking, you always say, oh, you know, I'm a sinner. You know, I'm not perfect. Why are you talking all the time who you are not perfect? Who told you you are not perfect? The Bible says, ye be perfect as my Father in heaven is per perfect. Are you talking contrary from the word of God? I am not perfect. I am a sinner. You know, you do something, I'm a sinner. 
Yes, on your own you are a sinner. But if you are Jesus Christ is in you, and you are in Jesus Christ, you are no longer a sinner. You are a saint, not because of yourself, not because of your sinful nature, but because of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And that's why, bit by bit, moment by moment, we need to depend on Jesus. Our eyes should be fixed on Jesus, no, no, not another person. Hallelujah. So when you say, you know, I'm not perfect, I never say that. And when you stand in the pulpit, you are praying, you say, oh Lord, you see how much sinful we are. How we are a sinner. Even we are not worthy before you. Who told you you are not worthy? Go pray in your room like that. Pray in your room that you are not worthy. When you are here, already you have confessed your sin. Before God, you are holy. Now you are talking like that because Jesus is not in you. Accept Jesus before you come to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. You get what I'm saying? Am I making sense? Yes. Am I making sense? Yes. Because you are standing in the pulpit and you are glorifying the devil. Oh, see how you know you are now in the territory of the devil. Oh, see, Lord, how sinful we are. We are coming as we are. We are so sinful. Who is rejoicing? Is that Jesus who is rejoicing? No. The devil. You are now conquering with the devil. You are a sinner. And yet Jesus has already died. You have died in Jesus Christ. You have been set free. Now you need to glorify. You are looking at me. Read 1 John. 1 John 3 verse 7. Read 1 John. Whoever practices righteous is righteous as my Father in heaven is righteous. The Bible says so. And why did Jesus come? Verse 8. He came so that he can destroy can you read that verse who has got it, you know? Has my friends have the Bible? Yeah. Brother Leo, you have, the, you, you, you have so many Bibles there and you are not sharing. Yes, yes. Yeah. Eh? Hey, dear children, the Bible says, dear children, God is calling us dear children. Let's know what, because people are being deceived by saying, I am not righteous. I am not righteous. When Jesus is in you, you are righteous. 100%. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you read? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Yeah, the works of the devil has been destroyed in the name of, Je of Jesus. Hallelujah. So when I practice righteous, I'm righteous as my Father in heaven is righteous. Hallelujah. So I don't have to call myself, I'm not, I'm not. What am I not? I don't talk. Let me tell you, I'm going to preach one day, next sermon, maybe the other time, I'm going to preach the language of faith. People, people are the way they are because of what they talk about. Why are you talking about that? You are glorifying the devil, just praising the devil. The devil has put me down. I've been attacked. Why are you being attacked? Why are you being attacked? Yes, when you are attacked, you say, greater is he who is in me than the one who is out there. So you glorify, the, the, then the devil flees. You know, let me tell you. When the devil is coming with fear, is threatening you. And then you have faith. And then they encounter faith and the fear encounters each other. Then fear runs away. Hallelujah. Amen. So when Jesus, is, don't open the door. Let the devil free away from you. Resist in the name of Jesus. That's James chapter 1 verse 7. It says, submit yourself to God. To God. And they resist the devil, and the devil will do what? He will flee away. You open for the robbers to come in your house. When you open and they start fighting you, and then you start complaining. Oh, oh. You opened it. Why do you open? Amen. When you open for that your door there, and then, then the robbers come in. And when they start terrorizing you, and then you start saying, oh, oh. Why? You open for the devil. If you have opened for the devil to come to your house, brother Eldorel, if the devil comes and they start terrorizing you, Bathing fights there and there because you opened the door. But if you resisted, the devil would not have come in. Hallelujah. Amen. You resist in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's how it is, man. God is good. Our oh, God is so good. I love my God. I love my God. <laughs> I depend on him all the time. My eyes will fo continue focusing. You know, I always think of my Jesus. You know, when I'm sleeping, I'm thinking of Jesus. Because I always say that my thinking always can influence the way, you know, can affect the way I think all the time. Yeah, and my, it can affect, you know, my think can affect my words, can affect my emotions. So I always focus, God, I focus on you. I focus on you because you empower me. 
I, Lord, let my attitude be the right attitude. You know, I want to follow you moment by moment. I want to do your will. I can have said many things, but I want to let you know, children of God, know that don't, don't, don't glorify the devil from your mouth. Just glorify God at all times. I, I'm a, you know, th th this very bond. And listen what I say here. Uh, as I've said here, uh, yeah, you, know, you know, when we do this, uh, uh, and just as dust could clench to the, to the feet of those who walk in the roads of Christ this, Christ this day, the things of this world clench Christians as they walk in the world of sin. You know, as dust, dust can clench you. As you are a Christian, you have been baptized, you are a believer, elder Paul, and as you walk around, and there's always dust, some things touch you, so you need cleansing. That's why when we come here, we need cleansing. We need to be cleaned. Again, we need to be rejuvenated. We need to be revived so that we become strong and continue following this journey. Friend, I want to let you know, this journey seems to be long, but we are almost home. Hallelujah. We are almost there. We are almost there. When I see all things, what things are happening, I know we are almost there. We are almost there. Don't give up. Very soon, we are answering our Lord Jesus Christ in the crowds. And they say, Lord, we will be waiting for you. You are the God we have been waiting for you. You know, I was reading a Bible, and the Bible said, you know, <laughs> we, in the New Jerusalem, even old people are going to be there. You know that? You will go at your own age, you know, when you are going to the Jerusalem. You are not going to be made a baby, you know. Even if you walk with the walking stick, you will be there with the walking stick. You know that? Yeah, the Bible, read uh, the, 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 the Zechariah, Zechariah 8, verse 4. What, read quickly. What the Bible says there. Yeah. Even in the, New Jer in the Jerusalem, people will be walking, like, wa walking with the walking stick, you know. All the ladies will be there. All the men will be there. And the children will be running on the streets, you know. Is it Zechariah? I said Zechariah. Zechariah what? 8, 4, verse 4. What does it say? Read quickly. Zechariah. Oh. If I'm not wrong, you know. Read louder, you know, people think that you are going to be made a baby when you are, no. You know, I, I, at my age, that's when I, I will be there. But there's no more sickness, there's no more sorrow. What does the Bible say? Brother Andreas, can you read? What does it say? Who, who got it? Yeah. Oh, old men and all, all men and all what? Mm -hmm. Women, they will be there, they will sit in there, yeah, and what? Uh huh. Oh, because of great age, they will be having what? Yeah, they will be having their stick of their great age, okay? The of the, yeah, the street of the city will be full of boys and girls. Daniel will be there running, yeah, you know, and the Saki will be there. Risa will be there, you know. Yeah? Then? That, that's, that's what it says. That's then. They'll be playing the streets. Have you ever seen, you know, I, I say yeah, sometimes people look at me, that's why I read that verse, you know. I, I just assume people, people have seen it, but, but people get shocked when I say something. So I say, let me give evidence, you know, <laughs> because I don't want to just say something. I have to really give evidence. So, so children of God, I want to let you know, as dust it clenches in your feet, that's why we do that. We are always doing this so that, you know, so Christians walk in the world and of sin, then they go. So it is, the, it, it is that one spiritual so, souls need periodic washing. We need periodic washing. This is a part of the blessing of the Lord's Supper when we do that. It gets the believer back on track by focusing the mind of the uh, of the f uh, of the, on, on the fact that the world has been what has been crucified to the what to the Christian and the Christian to the world. We have been crucified to the to the world and you know and the Christian. All, all these things have happened. And you read the book of Galatians chapter six, verse fourteen. The Bible says here, "May may I never post except in what in the cross of our Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, through he, through which he." through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. So we have been crucified, the world has been crucified to me and I to the, to the world. So all of us, when we get something, and as we live in this world, we need a periodic washing of our sins. Friends, it's good to accept Jesus. So when we do this, 
we are acknowledging that, Lord, okay, as we continue walking in this world, that's what we call sanctification. The process, you know, sanctification. So you cleanse something, you know, somebody talks about you. My sister, somebody will say something here to Brenda. You say, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. that man. And then you start putting in your heart, you know. You know, that's also something. Because the Bible says, forgive, forgive as Jesus did what? Forgive. And when somebody has done you something, you need to go and talk. So, somebody was telling me some things. And, and then I wondered, you know. He was telling me some things. And, and then he, he said, Pastor, I don't know what I'm going to do. Then I said, Brother, why are you sending somebody to go and talk? Why can't you go? Because the Bible says you go to your brother. And then if your brother cannot, or your sister cannot listen to you, now you can send somebody. So why are you quickly sending somebody? This is advertising. You know, that's why I love my Jesus. You know, when I tell my Jesus things, he could never go to the street and pronounce them there. You know, some people fear to tell you something. Do you know that? Fear to tell us something. Because the moment you tell me, I take it to the streets. I don't know. Better you take it to Hallelujah Street rather than taking somewhere else, you know. But you are taking somewhere. You call Jesus. Jesus never broadcast. So please, when somebody has shared with something, try to keep it confident. And not everything that you can tell people. Why I tell? No, I don't have to tell. There are things that I never share. Which are in my house, which are in my friends, I don't share. Why? So we have to keep it. So I, 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 I want to say this, children of God, because of time, but I want to thank God for all of you. I want to thank God for all of you that keep on leaning to Jesus Christ. Focus, let your thoughts focus you in Jesus Christ. Let your thoughts always be thoughts of Jesus Christ. Because the moment if your thoughts are for Jesus Christ, do you know that positive thoughts, it creates good what? It creates positive things. If you, don't, if you have negative thoughts all the time, even it's very difficult for you to relate to God. Do you know that? And you have to understand that your mind is the part of ground. That's where there is connectivity. Everything is connected to your mind. The way you look at me, the way that already things have started. Either you see me as negatively or you see me positively. But all these things, the way you see it, it goes and then it affects your attitude. Let us have the attitude of who? Of Jesus Christ all the time. Jesus Christ rebuked Peter. And that's why he said to Peter, do you know what he said to Peter? I want to finish there what he says here. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to do what? Wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not really, you do not realize now what I am doing. He never realized you can be with Jesus you don't know what Jesus is doing. Do you know about Jesus or you know Jesus? Do you know about, you know there's always words. You know I play with the words sometimes. You, you, you talk about, I know about Jesus. You know, when you know about somebody, you don't know that person. Do you know, you know what? Because you know about him. I may know about you, but I don't know indeed. When, but when I say, I know you, they say, when you say, I know you, Sister, Sister Corinne, I know you, you know? When I say, I know you, I know about you. About is about, about, about six o'clock. That, that means you are not very sure. I will come about around, around, about is like around, eh? I, you know, I'm not an English. I come from, you know, I learn English, you know, to, to get, you know, I paid man to learn English, but I learned it in a bad way, you know, in a very hard way, you know. So I, I, I jealous words. Sometimes I play with the words, you know. I love it, the words. You know, when you play with the words, very, very, very nice. So, so you know about Jesus. Peter said here, you do not know really now what I am doing, but later you will understand. You know, today you know. You know, like now, when you are with your parents, you may know the significance of your parents, my, my, my daughters here. You may not know. But you say now that even children, sir and ma'am, you are children. Let them, they are growing and they go to colleges and you remain two of you. That's when you know, oh, they were very important. They were making the house really look untidy, sometimes look good, sometimes bad, noisy, you know. It's good. You know, Jesus told Peter, you did it all know. You will understand it when I leave. You don't know what I'm doing. The disciples, I would imagine the disciples, they had had time to understand. They were with Jesus, they didn't understand. You know, you can be here, you can be in your own house, your wife don't know you, understand you. They know you very well. People don't understand each other, they don't know each other. Because sometimes I could do something I don't know. My wife might claim she knows me, but she may not know. Because that's why we are learning each other. You know, I always say marriage, you know, marriage is a miracle, it's a mystery. 
It's a mystery. Somebody grew in his house, and I grew in my house, and then God did make us to come and live together. It is a mystery. And a risk, you know. You take a risk. And then, then by, because of God's grace, and then, then you grow well. You grow well until you get old, and you are together loving one another. And the new, Jer in the new Jerusalem, those streets, you will be there. You can imagine, Andreas, and your wife, you will be there and walking with the stick, say, ah, and your children will be looking at you, say, ah, 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 that is there, you know. And it, was, it will be joy, you know. Looking, all of us, they are there. Lisa will be looking at you, and uh, wow, you say, hallelujah, we could be there. So Peter did not understand, I'm talking about understanding. Now the Bible says here, Peter says, no, said Peter, you should never wash my feet. You know, Peter was uh, very quick. I could have talked about Peter. I can preach about Peter. You know, Peter said, no, you, can, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. You are, unless I wash you. There was something Jesus was teaching them. Children of God, when we study this, there's something Jesus is teaching us here. Humility. When you are humble, you know, people get things and they just become so proud of themselves. When you are humble, you wash somebody. You humble, you go down to your knees and you are washing somebody. You are showing humility. Because if you are so proud, and I think that some churches, they don't practice this because they don't want. They don't want to touch somebody. They think, I can be sick. Otherwise, you are going to die very soon, you know. I, 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 I will be sick, you know. I don't touch. I don't know what is there, you know. I don't. What is there? Jesus touched. And, those, and they never minded. When you have the mind of Jesus Christ, it never matters. We are doing this and this being tested. I say, you know, you cannot your faith if you want to know who you are. And people want to know your faith. And the people want to know who you are. Put them in, dark, in the dark corner there. When you are fixed in the dark corner there, that's when you know. In the light, everybody can be nice. You know, anybody can be nice. But when you are cornered, that's when you come real. Eh? You become, you come, that's when people see. So, so, children of God, I pray as we are going to do this, remember that we are being cleansed again. We are being renewed again. Your sins are being forgiven. That's when we finish from here, we sing a hymn of shout, and we say, Lord, thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for your power. Children of God, I want to urge you, just have the humility of Jesus Christ. Just humble yourself for the footsteps of Jesus Christ. And let your eyes be focused on Jesus. Because our Jesus Christ is coming. And is coming to take those people who have already gained his attitude. Those who have already become like him. And day by day we want to be like Jesus. I don't want people to be like me. I want people to be like Jesus. Because Jesus never changes. It's the same. Today, God never changes. It's the same today, tomorrow, and yesterday. It was the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Never changes. He loves us so much. And that's why when we do this, children of God, remember what Jesus has done in your life. Remember that you are now going to be cleansed, and you are going to be energized. You are going to be revived again. And may God bless you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for speaking to us, Lord. We have understood the significance of, uh, of foot washing. Father, we are doing this because you did it. You showed an example. You were doing it, and because you were living as in this world of sin, the world which is rotten, Father, you just know that we can be soiled sometimes. And now you say, do this so that you can be cleansed. You remember what Jesus has done now and, now and then. So, Father, thank you for what you did. And as we do so, Lord, be with us and let your name be glorified for we pray this trusting in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Now we will go for foot washing. And if you are baptized, you are welcome to participate with us or communion. Yeah, we, I don't know, maybe uh, you will give us instructions how we go. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you are giving instructions. Thank you.